Hello and welcome to Into the Woods with Holly Wharton. This podcast has evolved over the five plus years since it first launched. From now on, I'm going to be talking about deepening your connection with yourself, taking inspired action, and really trusting yourself and your intuition. And also mindset, of course, but mindset of all kinds, not just business mindset. I think. Things are changing for me, as you may have noticed if you've been following me online or listening to this podcast, so anything goes here. I hope you stay along for the ride. Thank you so much for joining us today, and now let's get into this week's episode. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Into the Woods podcast, episode 299. We are almost at 300. I can't believe it. This is your host, Holly Wharton, and I'm back with another solo episode. Today, I'm going to talk about alignment, which is something that I've talked about a little bit in previous episodes, but I really have felt a massive shift for me in terms of alignment. And so I wanted to talk about that with you so that you can kind of get a feel for what that's like when you are in alignment. So before I get into today's episode, I wanted to first of all thank Naomi for increasing her pledge. Thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone who supports me on Patreon. And I would also love for you to join me on Patreon. If you get value from this podcast, I would love to have you join the Patreon community. So head over to patreon.com, that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com forward slash Holly Wharton. And you can support me there to make sure that this podcast can continue production. Membership starts at just $1 a month, and you'll get exclusive access to content that I don't share anywhere else, including a monthly Q&A and also done-for-you mindset work. So that's patreon.com forward slash Holly Wharton. Also, I wanted to quickly mention fasting. Those of you who have seen me in the past couple of months know about my fasting journey, and I have probably talked your ear off about fasting, but I received a message from a listener who wanted to hear me talk a little bit more about it. So I would like to direct you, first of all, to a blog post that I wrote last year. I think it was October. And if you go to hollywharton.com forward slash weight, that's W-E-I-G-H-T, not W-A-I-T, because it's about weight loss. And I talk about fasting and how I lost some weight last year after years of struggling with a thyroid problem and low energy and what I did to shift that. But basically, it's fasting. I do intermittent fasting, which means that I fast for a certain period of time each day and then I eat in a restricted window. So there are many different kinds of intermittent fasting and many different kinds of fasting. And if you want to learn more about fasting, you, I would highly recommend a book called The Complete Guide to Fasting by Dr. Jason Fung. He is the expert on fasting and he's a medical doctor, which I really like because he talks about all the science behind fasting. But fasting absolutely changed my life. Not only did I lose weight, but my energy levels are just absolutely boosted. I'm getting deeper sleep every night, better sleep cycles. I feel like a whole new person. It has been absolutely life-changing. So like I said, there are so many different types of ways of intermittent fasting. What I do is usually 22 or 23 hours of fasting and then one meal a day. Sometimes I try to cram all that food into one hour. Sometimes I'll spread it out into two hours and have kind of an extended dinner. But basically, I'm just eating dinner every day. And that has given me so much energy. It's been absolutely fantastic. I look forward to eating now. I look forward to planning what I'm going to eat. And it's been absolutely wonderful. So again, you've got to find, if you're interested in this, get the book, The Complete Guide to Fasting, and look into it. There are so many different ways to do it, and everyone's got a different way that works for them. So it basically figure out how many hours you're going to fast and how many hours you're going to eat. Play around with it and see what works for you. And as always, I welcome your emails. If you email me at holly at hollywharton.com, I am happy to answer any questions. However, I will probably also direct you to the blog post and the Complete Guide to Fasting book. That's a really, really great place to start because it is the Complete Guide to Fasting. So getting into today's episode, this episode was really strange for me. I had some kind of false starts. I started out on Monday setting up some show notes and fleshing out some bullet points for one topic and then 
just didn't feel like it. And then I started fleshing out the notes for another topic and then just didn't feel like it. And then yesterday I was really busy. And then today it was like I kind of kept dragging things around in my Google calendar until I left this to the end of the day. But I'm actually feeling quite refreshed now. I've had a break. I've had a snack. I decided to break my fast early today. And so that means I'll be having an earlier dinner as well. And here I am ready to podcast. So what I wanted to talk about is alignment. So if you've listened to this podcast at all, you probably know that over the last 10 years, ever since I left my first company, I've been slowly getting into alignment. I feel like I have been peeling off the layers and the masks of crap stuff that I took on that had nothing to do with me, and I'm slowly kind of spiraling into the center of myself. And I'm doing that through tons of mindset work. I've been doing lots of shamanic journeying lately and getting a lot of healing done there, and also just taking action towards the things that I want to do and letting go of the things that I don't want to do. And I feel like it's been such a long journey, but you know, the previous 10 years of my life were all about getting out of alignment. (laughs) I don't recommend that to anyone. So my first business was 10 years of little by little getting more and more and more out of alignment. And then the last 10 years have been the exact opposite. I uh, highly recommend the latter and not the former. So I was talking a couple weeks ago to my master group about how everything is just feeling so aligned. I had become so disenchanted with the online marketing world and online business world and marketing my own business always felt so strategic and calculated and it just got worse and worse and worse until, you know, I let go of my business and I let go of focusing on getting business mindset clients and shifted into helping people through my writing. And the book is going to be live next Monday aligns with episode 300 of the podcast, which I'm super excited about. And it's been so natural and organic to talk about this book online. I've been marketing this book a lot more than I have any of my previous books. I've just been sharing, not every step of the way, but a lot of the steps, especially in the last couple of months in terms of wrapping up the first draft and doing the editing and crowdsource the cover and I ask people for help with it. And that I really, really enjoyed, just getting feedback from people and what cover they enjoyed. I got a book trailer done and have been sharing that online. And, you know, it was last weekend when I got the book trailer. It came in from the guy who had done it for me. And I don't usually work on weekends, but I was doing my final round of proofreading of the book. And I saw it come in and I was so excited about it that I just dropped everything and went to social media and I shared it on Instagram and I shared it on Twitter and I shared it on Facebook. And I was really excited. And I realized how natural it felt. I'm excited about the book. I want to talk about it. At the same time, as you know, it scares the shit out of me because, again, I'm talking about talking to trees in it. So on one hand, scared because I'm coming out of the closet with my tree talk. On the other hand, super excited about this thing that I spent all of last year doing. And it feels unlike anything else. Every other iteration of my business, I always felt like it was so strategic, calculated, following all the online marketing rules, teaching all the online marketing rules, if you know me from way back when I was doing social media as a business. And ah, it just never felt quite right. This feels totally different. It's an absolute, absolute shift. So this is my story. And the reason I'm sharing this with you is so that you can recognize these signs when they show up in your life. So signs that have showed up for me are sent out an email asking if people could read the book. I would send them advanced copies and they could review it for me as soon as the book came out. Instantly got back tons of people saying, yes, please, I'd love to do that for you. Getting excellent feedback about the book. People really jumped to help me with that. And I'm super, super grateful. Friends of mine have said, you know, how can I help you? Would you like to be on my podcast? Can I interview you? How can I help you with this? Can I share it on social media? Can I review it for you? What can I do for you? People are offering to help me with this. And that's something, I mean, I've had before, but not like this. You know, I've always been pretty generous about helping other people out and in return, other people have helped me out. But here I feel like people are 
without even asking them, without even offering. Some people are just stepping up and saying, how can I help you with this? I really want to help you get this book out into the world. So people showing up and offering to help me is really, it's a huge shift for me. And to me, that's a clear sign that things are aligned for me. I'm doing what I'm meant to be doing. And it feels like I'm walking, and I say this kind of with air quotes, the right path. I feel like, as I said, the last 10 years, I've been getting more and more and more aligned to the point where here I am, and it's all fallen into place, and I'm on track. Now, as I've said before, there's no such thing as a right or wrong path. We're always on the right path, even if it feels like crap, because there's something that we're meant to learn, or there's something we're meant to experience, or there's something that's happening that benefits our soul's journey. So I firmly believe that I am always on the right path. However, there's that concept of always being on the right path, and then there's that concept of being aligned with the right path. And to me, now that things are falling into alignment, I just feel like they're flowing. It just feels easy. I'm taking easy action, even though it scares the crap out of me. And it's just flowing in ways that it hasn't flowed for a really, really long time. I recorded my first audiobook for this book. I wrapped that up in about a week. I'd never done an audio before. It didn't start out easy but it got easier the further I went along. And I learned a lot. And I look forward to doing future audiobooks. But it was so easy. It was fast. It was faster than I expected. You know, I created this Gantt chart for this book and all the things that I need to do for the book. And I had mapped out, you know, X amount of days to do this, X amount of days to do that. And everything is happening easier. Everything is happening more quickly. And it's not just things happening. I'm getting stuff done more quickly because it's super easy to focus. It's been super easy for me to just get things done. I've got everything blocked out in my calendar and it's just flowing beautifully. In fact, tomorrow I've got to go down for an interview. Someone's interviewing me about my previous book on the Way South Path. That came to me out of nowhere. I just got an email saying, hey, can I interview you? That's exciting. And that's my last walking book about the Way South Path. Super excited about that. Like stuff is flowing. Things are coming to me. Opportunities are coming to me. I'm really, really excited about this. Everything is just flowing beautifully. I'm really, really enjoying this. After feeling like for so long, I was just stuck in the mud, wading through treacle, however you want to call it. Like it just felt like it was so rough going for so long. And I absolutely know that this is a result of all the mindset work that I've done to clear off the fears and the blocks and the limiting beliefs and all the mind crap that were keeping me stuck, but also taking action towards the things that I wanted to do. You know, I've been wanting to focus on my writing for a long time, and there were things that I had to let go of to make this happen. And that was difficult. And that took me longer than I thought it would to let go of. But it's been all part of the journey. And now that I'm here, I really feel truly, truly aligned. So let me talk very quickly about how to tell when things are out of alignment. Because even though, as I said, the last 10 years, I've been kind of slowly, slowly, slowly getting more into alignment, there were still a lot of things that were out of alignment. You know, things sometimes felt off, but I didn't know what they were. I was really disenchanted with the whole world that I belonged to, which was the online marketing world, the online business world. You know, I felt disconnected at times from myself. I felt like things weren't quite right. I didn't know what. My life wasn't really what I wanted. I mean, more and more it was becoming that, but I wasn't really living the life that I exactly wanted. Like things were just really difficult. Even though, you know, over the last few years, they're getting easier and easier and easier as a result of the work that I was doing, but it still wasn't in flow the way it is now. There were times on my path where I felt really unclear, stuck, like I couldn't tell what I wanted, what I was doing wrong, why things weren't working. It just felt like things weren't working out sometimes. And then I would do a lot of work, take a lot of action, things would get better. But it was like I kind of went through these like stuck periods and then it would flow through and then stuck periods and then it would kind of flow through. But it was like, Like how I say about going up the spiral staircase where you kind of hit a new level and then you do some mindset work and then you hit new level. 
it was kind of like that. Like things would be difficult and then you know, I would kind of break through and then they'd be difficult and then I'd break through. And But those difficult times, those unclear, stuck, yucky times, those are signs that you're not aligned or you're not taking the right actions or you've got mind crap that's in the way. And it just feel, felt like things weren't always working out. So if, if you're in that situation where you feel stuck, frustrated, things aren't working out, things are hard. It's like you're stuck in mud, pushing your way up a mountain. That to me is a sign that you're out of alignment or you need to do the mindset work to more easily take the action you need to take to move forward. So those are the signs. Conversely, as I said, when things flow, when things are easy, when you're taking easy action, when you're getting stuff done in record time, when it all just feels like it's working, that to me is a sign that things are in alignment or coming into alignment. And this is, again, what it feels like to be walking a path of alignment. So even though the crap from my past, including my first business, was all stuff that I needed to experience to grow and to learn and to get where I am today, it's a very clear difference in how it feels. So if you're feeling stuck, if you're feeling out of alignment and you want to feel in alignment, which I assume we all will, what can you do to start getting more aligned? It goes back to getting clear on who you are, where you are today, and where you want to be headed. What kind of life do you want for yourself? What lifestyle do you want to live? What do you want to be doing with your life? How do you want to feel with your life? How do you want to feel every day when you wake up, when you're doing your stuff that you do throughout the day? What do you want to be experiencing? You need to get super, super clear on that. And then you need to take the actions you need to take to get there while simultaneously doing the mindset work to clear the stuff that will trip you up along the way. It's as simple as that. But I think a big problem for a lot of people, myself included at certain parts of my life, is that we don't know exactly what it is that we do want. You know, we may know that we don't want what we currently have, but we don't know what we want instead. And I think from the first time that I started doing mindset work about six years ago almost, one of the most important questions that I learned to ask myself is, what do I want instead? So I'm feeling like crap. I'm feeling stuck. What do I want instead? I want to feel like I'm in flow. I want to feel like things are easy. I want to feel like I take effortless action. Whatever, whatever it is that you want, get clear on what you want instead of what you currently have. And it also helps to get clear on of the things that you currently have, which of those things do you want to keep? Because very rarely is everything absolute shit in your life. Even when I was at the deepest, darkest stage of horribleness of my previous relationship in my first business, there were still things that were great. I mean, I lived in a really beautiful part of the world. I was traveling. I was making lots of money. So some of those things were good. It's just that the other stuff was so bad, it outweighed the good stuff and it really dragged it down and made me feel horrible and hopeless and unhappy. So get clear on the stuff that you have that you do want and get clear on the stuff that you want instead of the stuff that you don't want. That was really unclear. but I think you understand what I mean because I've said that a few times now. So it all comes down to knowing what it is that you want in life and then taking the action to get there, both doing the inner work and doing the outer work or the practical action. And for me, last year, working on this book, a huge part of my journey in helping me to get into alignment was working on this book because in collecting the stories from the trees, a lot of them were about personal empowerment. A lot of them were about things that help bring us into alignment, things that help bring us into a place where we're in touch with ourselves, we trust ourselves, we know ourselves better, and we can start taking more actions and making better decisions for ourselves that will get our lives aligned with what we want. And so as I was collecting these stories from the trees and listening to their wisdom and putting it all together into a book and editing the book, it was helping me on my own personal journey of, as I said earlier, kind of spiraling towards the center of myself and really getting in touch with myself on a deeper basis than I ever had before. And if I learned one thing from the trees, it's a phrase that kept popping into my mind. They kept telling me, it kept just coming into my mind as I was going out to collect the stories. Slow down, you move too fast. And last year was very much about slowing down. 
I did my walk a thousand miles challenge. I'm not doing it this year precisely because I want to change the way I get outdoors. I want to change the way I connect with nature. I want to change the way I commune with the trees and the outdoors. And I want to spend less time walking and more time just being still because that is where the magic happens in terms of getting into alignment with myself. And if you feel drawn to do this kind of work, I highly encourage you to pick up my book when it comes out next week and ask me any questions you might have about how to get into alignment through getting in touch with nature and listening to the wisdom of the trees and the wisdom of our bodies. Because as we slow down and as we make space and give ourselves time, our inner wisdom speaks up in the same way that the tree spoke to me last year. So I highly, highly encourage you as part of your journey to getting into alignment, get outdoors, get into nature, and above all, slow down. And give yourself the time and the space to just be. You know, I always talk about how I have an extensive morning routine where I I read, I do my morning ceremony, I'll do a shamanic journey. I do all kinds of stuff in my morning routine, but I'm doing, doing, doing. And yes, there are parts of that where I'm just kind of sitting and meditating, and but a lot of it's doing. And the more we can sit and be still and just be, the easier it is to get into alignment with ourselves. And the trees in this book have given us a number of things that we can do, like practical actions, activities we can do to help get into alignment with ourselves. Some of the trees talked about joy. Some of the trees talked about giving ourselves time and space, paying attention to cycles. Each tree was very different, but the overarching theme I would say is slow down, you move too fast. Slow down and give yourself permission and the time and the space to just be with yourself. And I think that's something that can be really challenging for a lot of people. A lot of people aren't comfortable with themselves. I am an only child. I didn't have siblings growing up. I, there weren't a lot of kids in my neighborhood, so I spent a lot of time alone. Also, you know, I have high-functioning autism, formerly known as Asperger's, so super awkward kid. So I really liked being alone because being alone was easier than being with other people. So I'm pretty good at being alone, whether it's in my house or out in nature or wherever, but not everyone finds it easy. So if you're one of the people who thinks, oh my God, I just can't do it. I can't be alone. I just don't want to sit. I don't want to be. No, start small. You know, if you try five minutes, three minutes, and then expand from there, 10 minutes, 15, and little by little, just stretch your comfort zone of being with yourself, not being with your phone, not being with a book, not being with a guided meditation, but just sitting in stillness with yourself and giving yourself the time and the space to be with yourself. Because once you learn how to do that, and once you learn to be comfortable with that and expand the time that you are with yourself, being with yourself, it amplifies that sense of connection with yourself. And it amplifies that sense of self-trust and it activates your intuition and all kinds of magic starts to happen. So I highly recommend, whether it's indoors or outdoors, slow down and give yourself permission, give yourself the time to just be with yourself. And again, if it's difficult, start small and stretch your comfort zone. So I think this is going to be a short one today. It's a message that I really wanted to share with you because I feel like things, it's very, very notable to me how things have shifted for me in terms of what life is like when I'm in alignment with the journey that I want to be on and the path that I want to be on and the life I want to be living. And I want to help you recognize the signs on your path that can not only help you to get into alignment, but recognize when you are coming into alignment. It's just, it feels easy. And I think it is important to pay attention because sometimes when we get unstuck, we don't notice it at first. And I think it probably took me a while as well to notice that I was in this kind of special space of alignment. I just kept noticing synchronicities and ease and effortlessness and the speediness with which I was doing things. And it kind of all came together when I was talking with my master guide group and I made a comment and someone said, oh, well, you know, you're living your purpose. You are in alignment. This is what you've been working towards. And it took someone else's observation to make me realize, yeah, absolutely. That's exactly what it is. So pay attention to when things start to lighten up and ease up 
and just keep doing more of the things that make it easier for you and that help you fall into alignment. So that's all for today. And I will be back next week with another solo episode. I'm not 100% sure what I will be talking about because it's a very special day because it's Earth Day. My book is coming out and it's episode 300 of the podcast. So we shall see what I end up talking about. It might be a mix up of a number of things, but as always, I want to make sure it's useful to you and it's not just me blabbing on about myself. The stories I tell you are always told with the intention of helping you on your own path. So that's all for now. Please drop me a line. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. You can email me at holly at hollywharton.com or find me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram and get in touch. I'm spending more time on Twitter and it's super fun. I've been on Twitter since 2007. I used to love Twitter and then I started hating it and now I love it again. It's great. It's amazing what life is like when things are aligned. I'm even liking Facebook again. So anyway, life in alignment. As I said earlier, I would love for you to join me on Patreon. If you head over to patreon.com forward slash Holly Wharton, you can join me there. And thank you, as always, thank you so much for listening. Next week's episode, as I said, I will be back for episode 300. And regarding the show notes on this week, remember to visit hollywharton.com forward slash 299 if you want the links to that blog post episode I mentioned and also Jason Fung's The Complete Guide to Fasting. Great book. I highly recommend it. I've been gifting it to all kinds of people. Thank you very much. Have a fantastic week full of alignment. Thanks so much for listening to Into the Woods with Holly Wharton. You can find more information about today's episode, including links for topics that were discussed at hollywharton.com. That's H-O-L-L-Y-W-O-R-T-O-N.com. If you'd like to connect with other listeners and get support on your journey, I would love for you to join my private community on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Holly Wharton. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com forward slash Holly Wharton. Thank you so much for listening, and I look forward to seeing you next week.